people should be shot. That's what Cummings claims to furiously WhatsApp message to Gove over the COVID F up. I'm going to read into this more from I News, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here. An article from iNews with the headline that people should be shot. Cummings furious WhatsApp to Gove over COVID F up. Dominic Cummings told Michael Gove that ministers should be shot at the beginning of the pandemic in a WhatsApp exchange disclosed at the, to the COVID-19 inquiry. What on earth in your mind would make you say something as despicable as that <clears throat> it was already despicable enough on some of the things that we are already hearing and I am not looking forward well I, I take that back actually I am intrigued to see how Matt Hancock defends himself at the Covid inquiry and that will be one definitely one to be interested too but just this headline here really got grind my gears saying people should be shot I mean what on earth, like, no matter, like, clearly, understandably, emotions are running high. We know that. But clearly, like, you think it's okay to say something like that? I mean, it's bad enough, the Prime Minister, and some of the things that he, remarks that he has said. I mean, he's a bad individual as it is, and we know about him, some of the phrases that he has said, such as letting the bodies pile high. But Dominic's Cummings saying people should be shot. This is just disgusting, beyond disgusting. <clears throat> so Dominic Cummings told Michael Gove that ministers should be shot over their failings to respond quickly enough to the pandemic in a WhatsApp exchange disclosed to the COVID-19 inquiry. Boris Johnson's former chief of staff was complaining about what he believed to be a lack of planning when it came to dealing with the outbreak of COVID and cases and hospitalisation soared. In messages shared with the inquiry sent on March 11, 2020, as the scale of the pandemic became clear, Cummings told Mr Gove, obviously Cabinet Office is a effing joke. They told us they had plans, obviously bollocks. can already tell the language here is completely unhinged from 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 Cummings here. It's absolutely unhinged. Indeed, Mr Gove replied. Mr Cummings said, I'm tempted to take the family to the countryside and hold a press conference saying you're on your own, the Cabinet Office, and Parliament have F, F all, F, 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 that's all. People should be shot. Mr Gove, who was Cabinet Office Minister and Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, when the pandemic began in 2020, was asked, who did you envision first in line? To which Dominic uh, Cummings, Don, Cummings replied, not for phones. Who do you honestly think? I've got a sneaky suspicion, or I think who he's referring to here. A former health secretary, I'm going to just go out on the limb. WhatsApp exchanges also show that Mr Gove had told Dominic Cummings that the government was effed up at the beginning of the pandemic. Quoting Mr Gove from the evidence dating the 4th of March. <sighs> Hugo Keith KC, counsel to the inquiry, said, You know me, I don't often kick off, but we're effing up as a government and missing golden opportunities. I will carry on doing what I can, but this whole situation is even worse than you think. And action needs to be taken or we'll regret it for a long time. When asked to explain on his comments, Mr Gove told the inquiry that at the time... He was concerned about the ability and structure of the Cabinet Office to deliver government priorities. He said, Covid was on my mind, but it wasn't the principal thing I was messaging it about. It was about the Cabinet Office overall, including the ability to deal with Covid. The senior Tory then apologised for his ang language and added that the weakness in the operations of, at the Cabinet Office, which he had recently taken responsibility for, would be further exposed by Covid-19. Mr Gove apologised to victims and bereaved families for the government's errors during the pandemic that he listed the fail. Uh, as he listed the failings. But the senior toy also defended Boris Johnson's number 10 against claims of dysfunctionality. Mr Gove said that he took some responsibility for the mistakes made at the top level of politics when the crisis unfolded. He said, if I may apologise to the victims who endured such pain, the families who endured so much loss as a result of the mistakes that were made by government in response to the pandemic. 
as a minister responsible responsible for the cabinet office it was also close to many of the decisions that were made i must take my share of share of responsibility for that politicians are human beings we're fair, we're fallible we make mistakes and we make errors i'm sure that the inquiry will have an opportunity to look in detail at many of the errors that i and others have made asked later what the government's failures were mr gove gave a direct answer I believe we were too slow to lock down initially in March 2020. I believe we should have taken stricter measures before we eventually decided to do so in late October. I think Mr. Gove is trying to make himself a real scapegoat here. Or he's actually the one who's actually the most common sense conservative in that cabinet office. Interesting to say the least. Testing should have been more rigorous through and through. There wasn't enough focus on the impact of children and there were errors with the procurement and personal protective equipment, he added. Knowing that, that it was not even an exhaust, exhaustive list, the UK was certainly not well prepared for the unfolding pandemic in March 2020, he said. But the Cabinet Office also defended his conduct and that of the Cabinet Office staff, saying that there were no easy decisions to be made at that time. I want to stress that I and those who were, whom I work with were seeking at every point in circumstances where every decision was difficult and that every course was bad to make decisions that we felt were in order to try and deal with an unprecedented virus and a remarkable assault on the institutions of the country. While some mistakes were unique and specific to the UK government, Mr Gove emphasised that we need to remember that governments everywhere make errors. Yes, they do make errors everywhere. But the language and the cons and the amount of evidence that has been so far been shown to this inquiry shows how much how controlled this government was. They didn't have a grip whatsoever on it. Like I understand that this was a bit of a shock here to the system, and a lot of nations were shocked to it too. But a lot of them handled it a hell of a lot better, excuse me, than we did. That is for sure. Mr Gove also sought to play down accusations levelled repeatedly during the inquiry that Mr Johnson's number 10 was mired in chaos. While there were strong possibilities in Downing Street under Mr Johnson, you will always have, it is in the nature of politics, strong views, especially sometimes punchy expressed, he told Mr Keith. Mr Gove said he has a high opinion of former Health Secretary Matt Hancock, who he's faced repeated criticism from his number of witnesses before the inquiry. Various witnesses have expressed concerns about his performance as health secretary, with the inquiry hearing that the country's most senior civil servant at the time. Lord Sidwell wanted Mr Hancock sacked. Mr Gove argued that it was too that too much was asked of Mr Hancock's Department of Health and Social Care at the start of the pandemic, and that other parts of government should have taken on more. I have a high opinion of Matt Hancock as a minister, Mr Gove had said. Oh yeah, he, he, he had a lot on his plate. Yeah, that's true, he had a lot on his plate, but he clearly had time to... Uh, you know, you know, uh, fund up his, uh, ensure that some of his mates get PPE contracts at that time. He had time to do that as well. You know, he had time to do that. You know, just, just going to put that out there, you know. The levelling up secretary, who held a number of prominent roles in government, also told the inquiry that the cabinet was flawed and not effective at dealing with the crisis. The cabinet office in and it is in of, of itself over many years, has operated in ways in which was not as effective as it should have been for the effective delivery of government policy, both business as usual and also in response to the crisis. The Surrey Health MP at one point noted there was a significant body of judgment that believes that COVID-19 was man-made, only to be told by Keith Leaf the divisive issue was not part of the inquiry's terms of reference. Well, we're not talking about the origin of the the origin of COVID here. What we're talking about is your part in it. So I think there's a, a couple of caveats here we need to, to uh, in this uh, from Michael Gove here. So first and foremost, um, give him credit where credit is due. He's come out and he's apologised for his part and his role during the pandemic. Whether you like him, don't like him, agree, disagree, whatever you think of, of, of Michael Gove, here he is on the spot saying, I apologise for my actions. He didn't have to do that, but he's actually one of the first, looks like one of the first conservative ministers who's had the goal to actually come out and say you know what we effed up i'm sorry you know what mistakes were made at least he's had the goal to do that now i'd like to think yeah, that other uh, cabinet ministers will have the, the courage to do what he did now it could also be that he's doing a, it for a political gain of some sorts as perhaps to woo some uh potential voters or maybe he's just i don't there's maybe a ploy behind his reasoning for do that i don't know that for certain but 
I haven't seen the video footage of him apologising, so it may be genuine, it may not be, but he's come out and he's said it. So the question is, are we going to get that from the Prime Minister when he sits down? Are we going to get that from Matt Hancock when he sits down? Something tells me probably not, but we'll have to we'll have to wait and see on them. Now, as I said at the start of this, Dominic Cummings should be um, kept well away from politics. This guy was a madman. For him to be making such messages and remarks about something as serious as this is nothing short of outrageous. Um, like I understand that things are chaotic, but there's a way you, you deal with things, there's a way you talk to people, and there's a way you handle any things. We already know he was a vile man, but for him to be basically saying people should be shot, and you have the Prime Minister allegedly saying bodies should be piled high, and you're just thinking to yourself, really? Like, you guys are just not going to just put your heads on and actually act like act like the, the, act like the responsible adults that you're supposed to be. Clearly, they're incapable of being adults here and i just i just think now i just think had it been jeremy corbyn had he been in charge would we see this kind of language would we have lost more lives i think that's an interesting question what do you guys think what do you think of michael gove's remarks in the covid inquiry do you generally believe his apology do you think it's just a political ploy for michael gove to woo over some voters potentially or ministers is there more to it than him just apologising? What do you guys make of Cummings' remarks telling people that should be shot? How does that make you feel? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Hit the like button, be greatly appreciated. Share it across social media and hit that bell notification icon so you'll be notified when I upload another video. And if you want to financially support me, you can do so by buying me a coffee or joining me on Patreon for exclusive content. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to catch you all very, very soon.